Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, one of these uh, sports channels here in the United States is having a show on Hagler, <clears throat> Hearns, Duran, and Leonard from the 1980s. It was a glorious time. All four of those guys were great fighters, right? Let me just say this. Um, Ray Leonard was the most popular of the four. It's just the way it is. Popularity is unfair. But the bottom line is Ray Leonard was like Canelo is now. Like Manny Pacquiao is now. Right? You didn't just respect the guy like you respected a uh, Floyd Mayweather. Fans actually loved the guy. You had some things happen in the 1980s that were simply preposterous. Ray Leonard once held a press conference. A lot of people showed up to hear Ray say that he was not coming back. <clears throat> One of the guys who showed up was Marvin Hagler, who was hoping to fight Ray. Eventually, Ray made up his mind to fight Hagler, and we got one of the all-time classic fights. Well, let me just say this. Um, I believe the Floyd Mayweather, who runs in a Jose Luis Castillo the first time, wasn't ready to deal with a fighter who could come inside on him and stay there. I believe that Floyd Mayweather would have lost to Roberto Duran. Right? Just food for thought. I also believe, of all the fighters from the 1980s, and I think Ray Leonard would have beaten Floyd Mayweather, right? Ray was a guy who, quite frankly, had faster hands, as hard as that is to believe, than Floyd Mayweather, right? Ray also hit harder than Floyd Mayweather. Ray took more risks than Floyd Mayweather. This is not to diss Floyd. The reason I'm mentioning Floyd is he's the gold standard in boxing over, let's say, the last 20 years in the, we'll call it the post-Roy Jones era. Well, let me just say this. Of all the fighters in the 1980s, in my opinion, the fighter who would have given Mayweather the biggest beating was Thomas the Hitman Hearns. Understand, Hearns was tall. Hearns had a great jab. Hearns had prodigious power. Think about it. He fights two guys who at the time were known to have great chins. Pimpino Cuevas, who was the champion at the time, Hearns wins the belt by stoppage. And he fights Roberto Duran. Check me on this. I don't believe either Cuevas or Duran makes it to the third round against Thomas Hearns. Right? This was a big guy who could keep you away. Understand. And I know Hearns lost some fights. When Hearns loses to Ray Leonard by stoppage, it's in the 14th round. Right? You didn't stop the 12 back then, folks. It's in the 14th round. Let me also say this, too. Hearns is winning the fight on the scorecards. Hearns is outboxing Ray Leonard. Think about how ridiculous this is. Imagine Golovkin, who was a great middleweight champ. Look at the reign. Long time established. Imagine Golovkin fighting a guy who had never fought at middleweight before. And the guy coming in, pursuing Golovkin, going for the KO in the first round. That's how preposterous the Marvin Hagler Thomas Hearns fight was. Hearns comes out in the first round against a great middleweight champ. 
and Hearns went for the KO in the first round. In other words, Hearns was a guy who had a fighter's mentality. If he could end the fight early, he'd go for it. He did against Roberto Duran. He did against Pimpino Cuevas. He tried it against Marvin. That was too much in his first fight at middleweight. Well, Hearns against a counterpuncher, like a Floyd Mayweather, would have a distinct advantage from distance. Floyd would have to find a way to deal with Hearns' length, to deal with Hearns' power, and to deal with Hearns' boxing ability. An argument can be made that Mayweather never fought anyone like Thomas Hearns his entire career. Right? Understand, Hearns is an elite fighter. Hearns was an all-time great. Right? Mayweather beat some big names. He beat Manny Pacquiao, for example. But he didn't have to deal with the length, the jab, the Hearns mindset. Right, that he could knock out Marvin Hagler. Well, right now, what I want people to do, because I know the current crop of fighters are older than you think. Right? Canelo's around 30, for crying out loud. Right? Look at the age of the Charlo brothers. They're older than you think. Golovkin is much closer to 40 than he is 30. Right? What I want people to consider is the fact that the next generation is already here. They're already proving themselves. They're already getting it done. It's just that the big names are getting most of the media coverage. <clears throat> so, I believe Jaron Ennis, <clears throat> right now, would be competitive against anybody at 147 pounds. He's 24 years old. He's 5'10". He's unbeaten. I'm guessing that within the next 18 months, he's going to get a share of the welterweight belt. Keep in mind, Manny's 42. Errol Spence is openly talking about leaving the division. Terrence Crawford is well into his 30s. Let's talk about the prospect who I think is the best prospect in the sport. And that's Victor Ortiz. I believe Victor Ortiz, because of weight, right, he's getting older, he's weighing more, He's eventually going to have to move up to 154. Ortiz, at least in the way I judge fights, has one of the best jabs in boxing. He has one of the heaviest punches in boxing. Low-key guy, he actually has above-average defense. No one talks about it because... He wins his fights by stoppages, right? You're, you're never really in an Ortiz fight forced to look hard at your scorecard. I believe he's going to go to 154. Let's talk about 154. 154 has a unification match taking place. Now, I love Jamel Charlo. Right? I think Jamel Charlo is the real deal. But he's going to be very tested by Brian Castano. Right? Understand, how do you beat an ambush fighter? In my opinion, you follow him after the ambush. Castano is a guy who got a draw in his fight against Arislandi Lara. And quite frankly, Lara was the lucky person to get the draw in that match. That match easily could have been scored for Castano. 
He's a guy who can walk through punches. He's a guy who can walk you down. Well, understand, both Charlo and Castano are older than you think. The young guard at 154, in addition to Victor Ortiz, soon, in my opinion, is Erickson Lubin. Now, Lubin got KO'd in the first round on really a fluke punch, in my opinion, from Jamel Charlo. Well, Lubin is back, right? Lubin is now a mandatory contender. I believe Lubin is going to make his mark at 154. I think there are many in boxing who are not going to want to see Jamel Charlo, even if he becomes undisputed at 154. Leave the division without giving Lubin a rematch. Well, into this mix of great young fighters, remember the names, Jaron Ennis, Victor Ortiz, Erickson Lubin, is this generation's, in my opinion, and I don't say this lightly, I don't drop this guy's name cavalierly, is this generation's Thomas the Hitman Hearns. And that is current 154-pounder Hamza Shiraz. Folks, he's tall, Right? I believe he's 6'1", 6'2". They announce him as 6'3". He's fighting at 154 pounds. Folks, this guy is far better than advertised. I don't even think the announcers realize how good this guy is. He's ambidextrous. He has great footwork. Think about it. He's much taller than his opponents, but yet he's a dedicated body puncher. He has an excellent jab. He's not afraid to drop a shoulder and throw an uppercut. He's going to be on the undercard of the Joe Joyce, Carlos Tackham fight. He is the European champion at 154 pounds. He is 22 years old. Let me repeat that. 22 years old. Now let me just say to the older fighters, the more established fighters, <clears throat> this is a young hungry lion in the forest who's gonna become Godzilla. Right? If I were <clears throat> one of these champs, Jamal Charlo, who claims he can't get a fight with Golovkin and who won't fight Demetrius Andre, right? that should be a red flag for people. Right? If I'm Jamal Charlo, if I'm one of these older guys who's around 30 years old and I have a belt and I don't want to be haunted by this young guy, Now's the time to fight him. Because if Shiraz continues to win matches and continues to lift his game, folks, he's going to take over the middleweight division. Right? This is a guy who, quite frankly, is an outlier. He's one of the best prospects in all of boxing, right? This is his coming out party. The guy he's fighting doesn't have power. I suspect he's going to blow out the guy. But what makes him special is the same thing that made Thomas Hearns special. When Hearns was fighting Ray Leonard, and that's a great fight by both men, right? That's a great fight by both men. Ray Leonard somehow gets inside on the hitman and hurts Hearns 
to the body. Hearns almost goes down. That's in the middle of the fight. So then Thomas Hearns, the hitman, gets on his toes and starts dancing. And you start to see that Hearns has the entire package. That when Hearns wants, rather than be the banger that you saw in the first round of the Hagler match, Hearns could actually dance, use length, outbox an opponent, and was a master counterpuncher. Shiraz has those skills. He's a great counterpuncher. This isn't the tall guy who knows he has a punch and who comes in expecting to just knock you out. And he's on a KO streak, folks. I believe he has 12 fights. He has 8 KOs. Most of them are his recent fights. No, no. This is a guy who actually has boxing skills. Right? Great counterpuncher. Great body puncher. If there's a cause for concern, it's that he leans over in throwing to your body. By the way, I have the same problem with Jaron Ennis. Right? A slick fighter, a Jermel Charlo, the 154-pound guy, might hang around, bait Shiraz into going low, and then have Shiraz unprotected on the side where he's going low. Right? But make no mistake, guys like Charlo are around 30 years old. There is an opening here for the next generation. The next generation is not only here now. Folks, some of these fighters are great. I understand. They don't have the experience. Right? I'm talking about Shiraz here, and he only has 12 pro fights. I get it. Right? Ennis hasn't fought Crawford, he hasn't fought Spence, he hasn't fought Pacquiao, he hasn't fought Amir Khan, he hasn't fought Cal Brook. <clears throat> How could I even be talking about him here? It's because of the skill level. So what I want people to do, and that Joe Joyce card's a great card, and the Joe Joyce Tackham fight's going to be a great fight. But what I want people to do is to Show up early. Look at the undercard. Look at this 22-year-old. Folks, I'm telling you, he's ready for the big time right now. Right? Let me just say, I'm not accusing anyone of avoiding him. How can I? When the champions in his weight class are fighting a fight to find out who's the undisputed champion. Right? Okay. Great. I'm not, you know, and let's face it, if Charlo wins that fight, and Charlo says, hey, okay, Lubin, you've been talking smack since I knocked you out in the first round. Let's have the rematch. I'm not going to accuse Charlo of avoiding this guy. But just understand, Shiraz I believe is ready for anyone. At 154 and at 160. I'm not saying he beats everyone, right? Hitman lost to Ray Leonard in a great fight. Hitman lost to Hagler at 160. Let's just say I'm expecting Shiraz to be as competitive as Thomas the Hitman Hearns was. Let me just say, too, because of his height, because of his skill level. Understand right now, I believe, even though he hasn't fought at 160, he'd be competitive at 160. Right? So, just write down the names. I believe they'll make all of us a lot of money. 
Jaron Ennis at 147. Ennis, by the way, 5'10". He's going to end up at 154. You know it. I know it. Victor Ortiz. Erickson Lubin. Lubin, out of all of these guys, of course, has the most advanced career since he fought Jamal Charlo in 2017. And, of course, Hamza Shiraz. These guys are here. Right? These boxing stations, God bless them. They're obviously focused on the guys who are around 30 and older, right? Canelo, uh, the Charlo brothers, Golovkin, right? Just to understand there is a group in their early to mid-20s who, in my opinion, can hold their own. I like Shiraz in his fight on the Joe Joyce undercard as good as that card is. I believe this guy has the most upside of everyone on that card. Let me also say this too. If I'm Shiraz, and I'm serious about this, I ask my manager to get me every Thomas the Hitman Hearns tape he can. Right, folks? Hitman hits Duran so hard that Duran falls face first on the canvas. Right? If I'm Shiraz, I also contact Hitman and I look at other tall fighters who held their own, who were master boxers. Vitaly Klitschko, who I keep mentioning in too many videos here. Right? To figure out how to leverage my height. Right? Shiraz has that fighter's mindset. He likes to bend over the pocket. I'd love to see him figure out how to change that center of gravity on occasion to lean back in the pocket, right? Understand, when you have reach like his, when you have a jab like his, the fight should not start until the opponent can get by your jab. If I'm Shiraz, I call up Larry Holmes. Folks, Holmes is still alive. He's still alive. I call up Larry Holmes and I say, hey, you know, I'd like for you to look at my films. I'd like your advice on how to establish a jab, have everything work off that. Keep in mind, you can be a great fighter. You can know how to fight in the pocket, which Shiraz does. Right? You can know how to fight in the pocket, which Jaron Ennis does. But if you can make the fight easy for yourself, if you can keep heavy punchers like Jerry Cooney outside, like Larry Holmes did, until Jerry Cooney tires himself out, then why wouldn't you want to do so? This guy has a unique opportunity because he's a unique talent. Remember the name. Hamza Shiraz. He's the European champion at 154. And I think he's one of the best prospects in boxing. He'll be on the Joe Joyce undercard. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video and don't feel bashful. If there are other young, talented guys out there who you think are going to rule the roost in the future. Because, folks, some of these champs are older, right? Look at the age, for example, of Arthur Beterbiev. Right? Think about the heavyweight division for a moment. Joshua, in his 30s. Fury, in his 30s. Wilder, in his 30s. Usyk, in his 30s. Holla at me if there's some heavyweight in his 20s that you think we should know about. Thanks for stopping by.